Welcome to Light Keepers Online. We're so happy that you're here. My name is Rana Thayer, and I will be talking to you today about the connect part of being a light keeper. And first off, before we begin, I invite the Holy Ghost to be with you wherever you are, with me as I'm speaking. And remember that he is the teacher. He is the spirit of Elijah who will help our hearts turn to our ancestors. So today, as we talk about the connect, remember to write things down. Wherever you are right now, this is your room of revelation, as President Nelson talks about and Elder Bednar talks about. Your room of revelation is a place where you will be personally tutored through the Holy Ghost on what your part is in family history and being a light keeper. So no matter your family history experience, no matter if you are married or divorced or single, an empty nester, a teen, a young adult, you have a place and a part in family history as a light keeper. We are the keepers of the light of our family. And when we act as light keepers, we are successful already because we are turning our hearts to our ancestors. So today when we talk about being a light keeper, I want you to remember a quote from President Thomas S. Monson where he says, we discover something about ourselves when we learn about our ancestors. And another woman that I love, Brene Brown says, connection is why we are here. It's what gives purpose and meaning to our lives. As we connect, discover, strengthen, and gather our families on both sides of the veil, we are discovering something about them and about ourselves. We're also creating a connection that gives us purpose and meaning. Now your story matters. You may not think that, but your story really does matter. And stories connect us. Our spirits are made up of stories, if you think about it. Our story started long before we came to this earth. They connect us. And when we hear a story of someone that we are connected to or that we've never even met but are connected to, our hearts turn to them. Think of how God teaches us through stories, scriptures, their stories. Think about parables, their stories. Think about your gene genealogy. They are stories. We feel connected through stories, our own and others. And that connection is why we are here, to connect with our families on both sides of the veil. So let's talk about ancestral connection. Now, I want you to meet somebody who is very important to me. Her name is Catherine Fay, and she is my third great grandmother. I never thought of myself as a family historian. I always thought that other people did family history. But it wasn't until about five years ago that I started to have a desire to know more about the people in my line. And this particular woman, Catherine Faye Martin, was one that kept coming to my mind. I had heard stories about her from my, mom, from my dad, and I had heard stories about other ancestors from my mom and dad as I was growing up, but I didn't know where to start. But I did know that Family Search had a site and an app. And so I started to look around my family tree. And this is when I recognized the name of Catherine Faye Martin. And there was a photo of her. And I connected just through this photo. She was born in Ireland. She moved to Scotland where she heard the good news of the gospel of Jesus and was baptized a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints at the age of 21 with her younger siblings, Jane and her brother, Samuel. When she was making the trek to Utah, she took a small chest, tin chest with her, filled with a few beautiful things, face and hand cream, jewelry, some colorful silk ribbons, and she wore her high rubber boots that helped make the trek across the plains more doable. Now, I totally connected with this because when she had just that description of what she took in her tin chest, I connected with her. Cream, I love good smelling creams. Jewelry, I love good jewelry. And ribbons and scarves, I love ribbons and scarves. I am hers and she is mine. I even connected with those high rubber boots, but I also saw that that connected with my daughters. Our daughters 
Jay and Tally. Here's a picture of them with their high rubber boots as well. And here is a picture of myself and my husband with my colorful scarf that I have. She is mine and I am hers. And I had a desire, once I connected with Catherine Fay, I had a desire to share that with my family to the point that our oldest daughter felt connected with her and she connected through simple stories so that when she found herself in Ireland, she took the time to go to find a place that was the Abbey where Catherine was christened. So when I saw how I was connected to Catherine, it became a part of me and I recognized that I was a part of her and then I wanted to share that with my family. This ancestral connection with Grandma Catherine is woven in our hearts. Our family knows and loves her and we remember, about, remember her and talk about her often. We are all linked together. And as Elder Neil L. Anderson says, we are part of a wonderful link that connects us together. We are connected to them and the Lord through his spirit confirms to our soul the eternal importance of what we are doing. As I connected to Catherine, his spirit confirmed to my soul the eternal importance of family history. I share stories to connect the next generation. We are linked together. Do you see that it just takes a desire to connect? Do you see that they become a part of us? Do you see you can be linked by a simple story? When we tell our stories, when we share our stories, we are connected in our stories. So I want you to think right now, what is your desire? What do you desire about family history? Do you wonder where do I start or I want to connect? Or do you want to just feel the spirit of Elijah in your, in your life like right now? Write down, take the time to write down, you can press pause. What are you desiring today with family history? Now, my desire led me to Catherine's story. And Catherine's simple story connected hearts in our family. And naturally, we wanted to know more about her. So let me tell you a little backstory about her immigration. She and her siblings wanted to join the saints in America to build up Zion. And so they moved to London to work and earn money for the travel. Times were hard. And Catherine used her money to, to send her brother and sister to Utah ahead of herself. She worked for years to earn money to make the trek to Utah. And finally, the day came when she was able to go set sail with the other saint immigrants. But to her sorrow, unexpected circumstances prevented her from leaving with them. She had paid the price, but she wasn't allowed to get on the ship for some reason. Now, she recorded this. Even in the shock and disappointment, she said, that almost killed her, she wrote that she grieved terribly and was heartbroken. But the Lord comforted her and healed her broken heart. In a beautiful blessing, she was told, dry your tears. The Lord loves you and is watching over you. Her faith was greatly tried. But the Lord, the Lord remembered her and her suffering as she recorded this story. And as her third great granddaughter, as I read that, I grieved with her. She was heartbroken. She went through hard things. She says the shock and disappointment almost killed her. But the Lord comforted her. And because she recorded and shared her story, even the painful parts, I connected with that. And the story has been handed down from generation to generation, and it found its way to us. When I grieved with her and connected with her, little did I know that a little bit later, my own daughter, her fourth great granddaughter, Tally, would need her story. Let's hear how she helped her in Tally's words.
during my senior year of high school, I went through a lot of disappointment and trials because I was trying to do a lot of great things in my life, but these things just weren't working out and I didn't know why. And I had to trust in the Heavenly Father that these things just weren't part of his plan for me. And so something that helped me learn and grow from those experiences that I was going through um, was connecting with an ancestor through a story of hers that I had. And um, her name is Catherine Fay. And she, one of the stories that helped me, um, she went through a hard experience trying to get from Scotland to the United States because she had converted to the church. She and her siblings had converted to the church. And Catherine earned enough money to send her siblings to the U.S., but she had to stay behind for a little bit and earn her, her trip to the U.S. And when she finally did, she tried to go, and I think it was a boat that left without her. Um, just things that didn't line up for her to be able to get to the U.S. and join the Saints. And um, she struggled with a lot of disappointment, but her testimony really helped mine um, when she said that she knew that this was part of Heavenly Father's plan, that, um, that she knew that Heavenly Father was still helping her. And that connected me, connected to me because I was also struggling to know that these great things that I was trying to do were not part of Heavenly Father's plan, but that he had something better for me. And I learned that through connecting with my ancestors. Um, by doing family history, I was able to gain a stronger testimony. So that little story that found its way to us connected our hearts to Catherine. Now, did Catherine know that when she was going through this horribly disappointing time in her life, that 160 years later, she would be helping her third great granddaughter and her fourth great granddaughter in a time when they were suffering as well? Probably not. Yet this story found its way into our hearts in a very powerful time in our lives where we needed comfort from the Holy Ghost. And it came through Catherine's painful story. I'm so grateful that she recorded her story, even when it was painful, because it had the power to heal our family at a time when we desperately needed it. Her story found us at the right time, just when we needed it. Because I was connected to her, I was able to share her story. And then because Tally was connected to Catherine's ribbon story that I told a while ago, she knew her. Then Tally now knows who she comes from and that she can face challenges with faith in Jesus Christ. Christ's power is the connecting power. On the right of your, your screen, you will see a part that talks about one by one. Think about the way that Christ ministers to us and that he ministered to those on earth. It was always one by one. He knows us individually and personally, and he still ministers to us one by one. I love this, this part of the quote from President Russell M. Nelson, where he says, without the atonement of Jesus Christ, there would be no immortality. Without the atonement of Jesus Christ, there would be no return to the presence of the Father and no continuation of the family beyond the grave. Christ's power is the connecting power in this family history. He knows us one by one, and we get to know each other one by one, name by name, story by story, our hearts connect to them. We have heart-turning experiences as we get to know them and come to, come to connect through Jesus Christ and his power. So think about it. How can connecting your heart to your ancestors help you now? You might want to take some time and write down your thoughts or your feelings about that just as we found with connecting with Catherine Fay from her story in a time where we greatly needed it, we felt Christ's power. He was the one that healed Tally through all of that and my heart through that. Even though we grieved with her, we were able to connect with her and she turned our hearts to Jesus Christ. So now let's look at some ways that you can tangibly take this, especially right now in this time of um, whether you're self-isolated or you're staying at home to stay safe, whatever it is, there are so many things that we can be doing to connect with our ancestors right here in our homes 
on our devices. I'm so thankful for technology for this. One of the things that I would love to show you right now is called Ancestors with Tasks. Now, I'm going to have some screenshots on here. On the left is iOS and on the right is Android. So first, what you're going to do is you've got to make sure that you are logged into Family Search app. And if you'll know on the very top left of your screen, that's the little app icon that you're looking for. It's the Family Tree Family Search app. Make sure you're logged in and you have your tree there. If you don't have a tree, you can always go to the help section and you can always figure out something uh, with a professional. But right now, let's assume that your tree is there. And on iOS, you're going to tap tasks on the bottom. There's a little check mark and it says tasks. On Android, you're going to go to the top left with either the three dots or the little um, hamburger lines, and you're going to find ancestors with tasks. Now what this does is it will bring up hints, and it will show you which ancestors that are attached to your family tree are needing tasks done right now. You're looking for these little blue dots. If you look on the little screen, the little blue dots is what you're looking for. So when you tap on one of those, it's going to take you into one of your ancestors that you're connected to, and you can look at the different, different record hints. So don't worry about it right now. We're actually going to show you a little mirror of, of what is going to happen on your when you're actually going through the process. But depending on if you're on iOS or Android, you're going to compare or review the record hint so that this is specific to the person or the individual that you are connecting with. What you're doing with these tasks, hints, and records is you are building their story. You're connecting with them. So what I recommend doing is when you compare the tasks, you're going to go in and you're going to go through all of the of the different things that, um, like for instance, there might be a birth certificate, or there might be a death record, or there might be a census record. Whatever task or hint that you're looking for, be prayerful about this. This is a person that you're attached to. This is a person who loves you, who you are connected to. Be prayerful and consider, is this the same person? Start looking at, them, at, their, at their birth dates and say, could this be the same person? And I promise you that the spirit of Elijah, the Holy Ghost, will testify to you if this is the person or not. Sometimes there are different duplicates or sometimes there are, there are a lot of different um, people, for instance, like a Will Smith. There might be a lot of Will Smiths out there. Is it your Will Smith? This is where the prayerful, consideration comes in and I promise you that the spirit of Elijah will help you to learn what is important in that particular person's time. So now I want to take you to a time in 1880. We're actually going to look at a census that was Catherine Fay's. Okay, so when you're looking at census records, this was just a little blue dot that I got in, in my app as well. You're going to, whatever it has that it gives you the chance to view the document, click on that view document because you actually get to see the document that you're looking at. Now, sometimes it won't let you see that. It'll just be the information on the computer or on your, um, on your app that people have indexed. So sometimes you won't be able to see the actual record, but let's look at how we connect and build Catherine's story through this, okay? So when I look at this, particular census. I'm going to look at the top row. You can zoom in with your fingers. You can look at the top row for information. Read all the rows across for more information. And then what questions can you ask to find your story? As we look through this, I'm, I wanted to find a little bit more about my third great grandpa. And if you'll notice on this, when you go into looking at it a little bit, when I zoom in, that yellow part right there, it says Catherine Faye Martin. It says that she is married. She's a, fe she's a female. It says her age, 52. It also said that she keeps house. Later on, it says where she's from, but it doesn't list my third great grandpa. So I write that down because that's something I want to find out. It does say that she's married. So I know that this was a time where she was married, but I am really curious. Number one, I connected with her because this says she's 52 and that she keeps house guess what? I'm 52 and I keep house. She's living with her daughter who's 12. And it says under 
um, the part with her daughter, Nancy, it says that she's a tell operator. That means she's a telegraph operator at the age of 12. Isn't that awesome? I love that. It also tells me what her house number is and where she lived in Salina, Utah. So these little parts of her story unfold as I look closer into these tasks. Now, what was really cool is this particular photo was on Family Search that says that this would have been her house that she lived with at that time. And do you know who found this particular photo? Our oldest daughter, Jaya, who had gone to um, Ireland and connected with her by going to visit her Abby. So just these little tiny things, Jaya found this, sent it to me and said, Mom, did you know that this was the house that she lived in? So her story started to unfold just by going through and looking at these different tasks. This is what family history looks like. It looks like connecting through simple stories of everyday life. It looks like being able to share these things across generations to heal and lift and connect through Jesus Christ. It looks like a family who loves ribbons and creams and high rubber boots and jewelry and recognizes that these joyful things connect us to our Catherine, whom we love so much. It looks like a family who can connect through stories of disappointment, heartache, and trial and rise up and overcome life's trials with faith in our Savior, Jesus Christ. It feels like the ribbons of generational love being woven in our hearts as our hearts turn to our ancestors. And she, our Grandma Catherine, and all of our ancestors turning our hearts to Jesus Christ. The Lord's promises are sure. They are real. And there are promises sprinkled all throughout family history that we've been given through living prophets and apostles. I encourage you to go and look at those particular promises that you feel like you need. I love Elder Renlund's talk where he talks about all of the different blessings and promises that, that, that are promised. And he tells us to go back and to say, do you need any of these promises? Do you need any of these blessings in your life? Right now, as we are in a different time, uncertainty, and there might be fear, or there might be some trials that we're overcoming, I promise you, that family history is one of the greatest blessings in our lives, one of the greatest tools that Heavenly Father has given us that we can heal, we can overcome these feelings of fear, or we can overcome um, anything that we're going through, any anxiety or anything, all through Jesus Christ. And when we connect with these stories with our ancestors, we connect to Jesus Christ. That is the power of family history. I love this scripture in DNC 8488. This is a, one of the Lord's promises that I know is real. He says, for I will go before your face. I will be on your right hand and on your left and my spirit shall be in your hearts and my angels round about you to bear you up. Who are those angels? Consider that. Are they ones that love you? Are they ones that you're connected to? Are they ones that you have taken to the temple and you have done their temple work so that you are connected to them? Are they ones that they, you have not found yet that are waiting for that to happen? Through the power of Jesus Christ, his sealing power, the family history blessings that we receive and the temple blessings that we can do to connect all of our families, I believe that this is the ministry of angels. This is one of the great, great blessings that the Lord has promised us, that our angels will be round about us to bear us up. I testify to you that I know that Jesus Christ lives. He's on his way. We are preparing for him. And I love him. As Elder Jeffrey R. Holland says, on the left of your screen, he talks about the angels of Jesus Christ. He says, in the gospel of Jesus Christ, you have help from both sides of the veil. And you must never forget that. When disappointment or discouragement, or may I say pandemic, strike, and he says, and they will, you remember and never forget that if our eyes could be opened, we would see chariots, horses and chariots of fire, as far as the eye can see, riding at reckless speed, 
to come to our protection. They will always be there, these armies of heaven, in defense of Abraham's seed. I join in the challenge with President Nelson, who has said that the greatest cause, the greatest charge we could ever be involved in right now is the gathering of Israel on both sides of the veil. I testify that this is the work that we get to do. And right now we have all of this time on our hands, or maybe we don't have a lot of time, so we can make a lot of time. We can make time to gather Israel on both sides of the veil by connecting, discovering, strengthening, and gathering our family. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ, amen.